Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech and gameplay video on Merfolk Tribal. Merfolk Tribal is like every other tribal deck you've seen on this channel if you've been watching for a while. It runs Merfolks like Kumena Speaker and Shoreline Scout, Merfolk Lords like Mistbinder, Master of the Pearl Trident, and the new Vodellian Hexcatcher to make all of our Merfolk real big, as well as give us sometimes other uh, circumstantial abilities like the Hex Catcher's little mana leak ability thing or the Master's Island Walk. We also run cards that reward us for having Merfolks like Realm Walker for some card draw. Uh, old Sea and Sky Merfolk God here, whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce, is a sort of payoff card and also helps protect your Merfolk. And we also run Collected Company as we are an aggro deck in green that can run it. And Merfolk is a pretty aggressive deck, so we'd like to collect a company lands, relatively self-explanatory lands, running loads of just your whatever uh, blue and green dual lands that can come in untapped for you early, and also running some of the uh, creature type lands since the majority of our deck is in fact just creatures, so these are usually totally fine if you you know want to run them. Uh, sideboard, all relatively self-explanatory uh, Silver Bullet cards, Back to Nature for Enchantment, which is usually the Nine Lives combo that can just lock us out of the game. Ooze for Graveyard Hate, Kopala as again uh, as a sideboard card against the more controlling single target removal kind of decks. Reclamation Sages just for general artifact and enchantment removal. Aether Guest against Red and Green, more aggressive decks that can sort of go faster than we can. Uh, I've actually seen some good results, or good results with the phasing of Zalfir as sort of a sweeper in blue against like elf decks and stuff, or goblin decks that'll go wider than you, kill you faster. Having a somewhat uh, sweeper in blue is nice, but if you're not sold on this card, don't bother to run it. This is one of those, don't be afraid to tweak this list, or any of my lists, really with cards that are more relevant to what you've been seeing. Just, I hope that explains my reasoning. Ashiok Eraser against other combo decks besides including the, like, Nine Lives kind of Enchantress deck, but it can also, say, sort of counter a Supreme Verdict. Shifting Ceratops and Carnage Tyrants are against the, uh, against other control matchups that are running a lot of counter spells, or in the case of Ceratops, like your Mono Blue Tempos that might crop up every, every once in a while. And that is the basics of the deck. We'll go on now to our first game. And game number one with our little merfolk tribal list. Go ahead and play first because we have a brain in our skull. Uh, a one drop, a two drop, some lands, and a lord. It's fine. Pretty good hand. Uh, yeah, we'll play the unclaimed territory, naming merfolk, of course. And just play speaker. Next turn, we'll more than likely play an adept, just revealing a, a regery. Alright. Looking for thoughts? Yeah, thoughtsies? Okay, fair enough. Do you take the adept and mess up my curve, or do you take the regery, of which I have two? It might actually be right to take the adept there. Because I'm going to be able to, odds are, play a regery anyway. But I can see arguments for both. That's a nice sleeve. I like that. Okay, uh, change the plan. Well, since they took the adept, but if I, even if they hadn't, and I would have still drawn the master of the gold trident, I would have played that. Really, we're just looking to, in this deck, just try and push the most damage as fast as we can. Like most, you know, traditional pure aggro decks. Alright, two lands. Probably sitting on a removal spell. Only question is what kind. Bone Crush Giant. That'll do it. Another unclaimed territory, again, maybe Merfolk. Just play a Regery. Just trying to make a big old board. Now, they can play a land and do a, play the actual Bone Crusher if nothing else. They almost certainly. Pardon? I'm not sold on this land. Like, if you have it, fine, but I would never burn the wild cards on this thing. But maybe that's just me. Uh, uh, let's get rid of the black land, since we can't do... We can't play another Murphuck with this reason. Uh, 
Next turn, we have a Hex Catcher and a Pearl Trident. We're, they're facing down lethal on board. So if nothing else, we're probably going to win this game one. Which one is that? Okay, that's a slow land. And yeah, they we almost certainly had lethal anyway. So I understand that. Uh, they had... Let's see, they're playing blue-blacks. So they're probably not going to run sweepers, so... Copala, maybe? Bring in... Eh, what do we cut here? Honestly, the Mistbinder. Mistbinder is one of... Mistbinder and Adept... Adept is fine, I guess, but probably Mistbinder is... one of the, air quote, least good merfolk. I mean, it's still fine, you know, it's a two-mana lord. It's just that I see now why in older formats like Modern and such they don't run the Mistbinder and are usually mono blue since a lot like, how do I word this? It's great to have just a generic kind of French vanilla Lord if you want to call it that. But when you could have things like Lord of Atlantis and stuff like that or even the Island Walk Merfolk whose name is escaping me. I could see why Mistbinder has sort of fallen into this weird place that it's like might not be the strongest. Now it's a great budget card, however, if you like strapped for wild cards, which is possible, as we all usually are, then you know, go ahead and run it. It's still a very good card. Our opponent is really in the tank. It's just like bring in removal, play the control game, and I'm gonna try and hit you in the face a lot. Now, I don't know what kind of removal spells they have. They might bring in like a, some Witch's Vengeance style thing, or maybe like a Ritual of Soot, maybe. But like, I don't know if it was that deep of a, of a thought pattern. Uh, uh, four lands, three spells. We don't have a one drop, which isn't great. But we have two, three, and a collective company. And we're on the draw. Maybe we draw one would be nice. Until we get, okay. So it wouldn't have mattered if we had an early drop anyway. So we were gonna we were gonna lose it regardless, which is a fair point. But still, I maintain that it was like sound reasoning in that moment. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and play the coast. I don't think we're gonna need to worry that much about our life total being low. Okay, so they were gonna pick apart my hand no matter what. Happened. Okay, that's fine. Uh. I guess we'll play the Ottawara. So we have two blue for Papala next turn. Which is, I mean, okay, they're missing lands, which is good. Correction, I'm not going to play that card. I didn't want to play it anyway. <laughs> uh, we'll play the Unclaimed Territory, sure. Naming Merfolk. Just play the Regery since they know that we have that already. Try and maintain some information. Okay, there's a second land. Now, a million dollar question. Okay, well, if they kill it, then... Yeah, that won't really matter. Uh... Sure. Uh, I guess we'll just pass and collect a company. Molten Impact has weirdly seen a load of play for, like, an alchemy card. It might actually be one of the more popular alchemy cards. At least, as far as I can think of off the top of my head. Not having any an uh, actual data to support that. It's more of an anecdotal statement, but still. The card's like just a good card. It's like fine, you know? Don't need the third one, so we can go Regery Hexcatcher. I can play a Sea and Sky next turn. Now, oh, and especially with whatever they play with Molten Impact, I was really, like, gonna lose boards anyway. Unless you have another card, that's not gonna do it. Oh, no, yes it will, because it's gonna die. So in that case, we might as well counter that, unless they pay for one. All right, they're that committed to it. Uh, if I counter, if it loses a target, right? Yeah, if the adventure loses a target, I think the spell fizzles, so the bone crusher just goes straight to the yard, right? 
Yeah! Okay, that's not that bad. I'll take that. This weird sort of corner case interaction with adventure cards. Should you at home be in a similar situation? Which, to be fair, Bonecrusher is just a solid card. It sees a good amount of play in format. Well, that's not great, but eh, I don't think I do. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep the land back, just so we can bluff having more than we do. We could cast basically everything in the deck anyway, so we don't really need the land drop that much. Almost certainly have another removal spell for the Seeds guy, which isn't great. Okay, I have to play a card, otherwise it's going to get real big real fast. Um... Uh, give me a spell to play. That'll do. Just trying to keep the Trespasser from going all werewolf. Oh, that's real fucking useful. Thanks for the land. <laughs> it's not great that they're going to be able to attack and start picking apart my graveyard for life and all that stuff, but it's better than having the bigger of the two creatures here. Do have a hive of the eye tyrant, which is something. Kinda has to be sad here. They could fire that up, but that would leave them totally shields down. I do not take this block in a million years. You're in like a very happy place. They kinda have to attack to get that life gain, so I understand why they get it. Now they could always fire up the hive on defense, which is pretty relevant. Oh, right, because he didn't cast a spell. Right, 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 right. That's not great. I'm not in love with that. But at least if I play the speaker now, it does give Sea and Sky indestructible, so we can attack, maybe draw another spell to put the glutton back to its human form. Since that's how the knight... Ah! <laughs> Doesn't help me, game. Thank you for that. Really, really needed, like, anything else but that. We'll go ahead and play the land, I guess. If nothing else. I really... Is it up... Does it... Does, I think this does... Yeah, up to two. I'm sorry, what? Alright, fair enough. So that was their, their form of sweeper they brought in for the sideboard. That is absolutely brutal. Give me a land and another... Or give me a spell and another spell, please. I would very much like... Can't activate that. Okay, okay, that'll... That should turn it back to its human form, so that's not too bad. And then... And it's turn, yeah, okay, that's bad. Because not only is the glutton... The graveyard glutton... Uh, the... What's the word? The bigger of the two creatures, it also does the exile ooze thing twice and we don't want them to get more life back. Which sounds like a very obvious statement, but you know. Okay, there's there's a ward spell there. We have another one. Because you might, that's has to be said, you might actually have that. Okay, I mean creature lanes something. Go ahead and attack. We really need to draw a spell so their trespasser doesn't evolve. For fuck's sake! Maybe they'll feel scared and block. Maybe. They won't because they have a brain. Ah. Uh, sometimes, yeah, you do just also flood out, which isn't great. But it is, you know, a necessary part of the game. Now, the real question is... Correction, I don't even get the chance to block. Um, okay, so we do this. Okay, if they... If he attacks, actually... We're not over the moon about it, but I can just hit him with the Storm Giants Hall here. Or the Hall of Storm Giants. And they play the thing. Okay, so... 
But if they attack, they just die on crackback. Right? I think there's nothing they do that doesn't let me win here. Six lands, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we got there. God, that sucked. That could have been very bad. Go ahead and haul first. Go ahead and bonk him dead. They can block whatever they want. Thank God. I'll take a win however I can get it. It's a pretty good game. Honestly, like, not a bad deck from our opponent. Like, just a very good practice mid-range list. Now, we'll go on to our second game. And game number two with our little Merfolk aggro deck. Or Merfolk tribal list, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, three lands, a curve. No lords, which isn't fantastic. I'm sorry, what? What is it, like, mono red devotion, maybe? Uh, we'll go ahead and secluded courtyard, naming Merfolk. Then we'll play the shoreline scout and upgrade our unclaimed territory. To a tropical island. That's that 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 was a that's a real <laughs> out of left field card that I haven't seen in the main deck in a while. But I'll take it. Dragon try. All right. Uh, okay. Since we drew a lord, this play basically solves itself more or less. Play Lord, hit face with Shoreline Scout. They almost certainly don't block since they're going to be trying to ramp to whatever it is they're doing. We'll see what we'll draw next turn. Another den. So they can play a four drop dragon. Okay. Okay. I'm in it. I don't know if they're. If this is good, but I am 100% here for this. Uh. I think we'll actually play the Adept, revealing the Speaker, since if nothing else we can just play the Speaker. Ah, uh, it's a Shoreline Scout. We'll go ahead and play the Scout, and we'll turn the Speaker into another land, so if we draw like a collecting company off the top we can go ahead and play it. We're gonna not attack, because it's a free trade for our opponent. Okay, so five, up two goes to seven. They could play like that Lapless card. Okay, I gotta be honest, I'm starting to get a little confused. A little confuzzled, if you will. We'll go ahead and play the island and probably play Old Sea and Sky. If they had, okay, I was about to say, if they had a removal spell, that would have been the time to do it. Uh, we're gonna not attack. I don't love not attacking here, but we need, like, something big to, like, make some shit happen. It's like, Kerberos? Kind of a cool effect. Uh, okay. So, if we... We don't need to play that tap, right? Because... Yeah. Go ahead and come into play tapped. Play the Redry. Our board's real big, and now we just bonk our opponent in the head. They, I would assume they might block here. To be fair, okay, they got it. Either they're either gonna die now or play some real big scary thing. But mono red is a, a heavy ask. Okay. Here's some wealth. Uh, what is that? Put a red card. Okay, so um, what's that? Uh, sneak attack. Okay, so we'll go ahead and play Realm Walker. See what we see on the top. Of course, naming Murtha. And now we actually force them to make a block here. Go ahead and just run a big board. Make an attack. Of course, a lot of lands on the top isn't fantastic. And they correctly block, as they should. So... Alright. I'm a little... I mean, I'm I'm interested. I am interested. Let's be fair about that. Uh, they're mono red, so Aether Gust basically brings itself in. We'll go ahead and take out a couple mist binders again for much the same reason, like we talked about in game one. Mist binder is probably the weakest Merfolk in the list, if I had to be fair. 
Still good enough to run the main deck, though, since it can just, you know, be a lord. Now, they're playing some sort of mono red dragon y sneak attack thing? But, I know, they do have some removal. It's interesting. Um, this is going to seem so crazy, but I'm actually going to keep this. I'm just going to... Now, we also might draw into something. Into, like, land. But even if we don't, we can just territory on one and change that speaker into a tropical island, which is nice. Of course, naming Merfolk again. So, yeah, we're just going to shoreline scout. I'm gonna turn the speaker into a tropical island. Okay, Spike Field Cave. Land. Here's some wealth. It's an option. Go ahead and play the island. Play the adept, and we'll just reveal another adept because we clearly will run another one if we have one already. If nothing else, we can just play a Master of the Pearl Trident next turn. Let's see, each oh each dragon card in your hand. Okay, that's not bad. Don't know why I thought it was only one. Okay, whatever dragon they're playing, it's gonna be an issue. I think our yeah, I think our original plan of just playing the Trident here and just force our opponent to make choices. They'll probably just eat the six. Yeah, I was about to say. Since, what, let's see, two, and then that makes it four, because it's, or sorry, two, three, three, four, five, five, six. Okay, but they did just anchor their own board, so that's not that bad. We'll just play the Adept, revealing the Speaker, which we've already shown that we had before. Hopefully find a land. Okay, that's not great. If nothing else, we can just do it again, revealing the same thing, which is a nice touch. Town Razor Tyrant. Target non basic, you don't control all abilities except for man abilities. And in step is permanent, it's two damage in a second. Cool. My, I need my lands, so go ahead and take it, that's fine. Okay, we got a land. We're cooking. Uh, let's see. I think we will, however, maintain the same plan here. Again, revealing the card we've already revealed. You are allowed to do that. Another lane is very nice. Uh, I'll take two damage. That's fine. We're not, like, super scared of that for the most part. Fuck me! Goddamn! Alright, no, that's good. That's good. And they'll just glory binger away one of my creatures. Okay, I love our opponent's deck, by the way. I don't know if that's clear, but I'm all about this. I love people, like, tinkering with things and trying lists. He didn't exert it. Why did you not exert it? That seems a little weird. So, I think we have have to do you and then we can attack with these okay so he takes the block okay so before oh shit that's right um I think we'll sacrifice the land now, before they uh, before they go to attack phase, as they declare attackers, I will Ether Gust the Glory Bringer back to their hand. That works too. Okay. So if they attack with the Din, I think I gladly take the trade with the Master of the Pearl Trident. Back to their hand. Or, sorry, on top. Pardon. It's just bottom. Okay, so I have to block the den to not die. We can go to. F let's see, four, five, go to two. 
great. Okay. Naming Merfolk, of course. So we have four. They're at nine, so they go to five. If I get two lords, it would only be two that go down to four. What the fuck do I do? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess we have to try. I don't think there's anything I do, at least of all with draw like that. Uh, yeah, they just straight up win. I'll let them uh, kill me. They earned that win. I'm not even upset about it. That's fascinating. I had forgotten about Town Razor Tyant since once it got once it got the nerf that it, let's be honest, rightfully needed. I had you hadn't really seen much of the card. Damn. It's a good game though. Very good game. I'm not even mad. I'll have to take that. Uh Spells ability for Murpha. Alright. Think we'll just run it again. We will be on the draw on the play, sorry. Not on the draw. And again, play first, especially in this matchup. One drop, two drop. That's fine. It's not like fantastic, amazing or anything like that. Go ahead and breeding pool. Speaker on one. We then will probably play the Castle of Antris and just play a Mist Binder. We can start bonking our opponent in the dome here. Uh, so what they have? Some sort of like. Okay, correction. We'll play the Hall of Storm Giants now since that can come in to play untapped right now. I imagine they're sitting on some sort of red burn spell that's gonna kill my speaker. Which sucks. Okay, they're not. So I think well they did show a spike field cave hazard thing in the spike field cave, so maybe that's what they're sitting on. The only thing I can think of. A landmark comment. Dragon Lord Serpent. Our turn is basically, yeah, we're just gonna. Play the castle. Castle now. And play a Mistbinder in the end. Just make our, uh, our opponent make, you know, decisions and choices. Because you can't really just keep on taking these. Okay, so you play a four drop. I mean, if Ferocidon's a thing, can't ignore it, really. Um, go ahead and play the Green Pool. Let it come and play tapped. Uh, honestly, we're pretty happy if they want to trade a Ferocidon away for a Mistbinder. Again, we're just looking to make our opponent make choices, because we are threatening lethal. Really? You double block that? I, uh, which one do I want to kill? Um, I think we do kill the Servant, since any dragon they play will also ping themselves. So yeah, we'll kill a Servant first. Again, hopefully their Ferocidon, it being, as it should be, a symmetrical effect should help us, or might help us, do what we're wanting to do. There's a Town Razor Tyrant, which is a thing. It does hurt him, which is nice. Doing fine. Taking an old ping pong there. And they about to say they don't attack, because they usually kill them on the crackback. Uh, go ahead and play the Unclaimed Territory, naming Merfolk. Uh, we can afford to keep the, uh, the big boy land around for a while. We're not that concerned about that. Now, do we attack and just give up the trade? Let's see, if we attack with both, they have to block them both. So the Ferocidon dies, and my Mistbinder, but the Town Razor lives. So I think we're, yeah, I think we'll not attack for a turn. 
I'll go ahead and take the two damage. We're not that concerned about that at this stage. If they play a land and want to turn on the den, I can always besage you the land. Or besage you the den. Uh, okay, it's, it's a thing. That's fine. Hopefully we can draw something that'll get a blocker out of the way. That's not that. Thanks, game. Courtyard, naming Merfolk. <sighs> okay, so we'll go ahead and attack with old Sea and Sky here. Since it is indestructible. Well, thank God that didn't work out. So next turn, we can fire up the hall here. Since they didn't, for some reason, decide to do thing to that. Uh, Reachery's honestly pretty good. They do have to take a block here, it has to be said. And they do block with the Ferocidon, which is the correct way. Let's see. Uh, both tabs. Yeah, we'll go ahead and sack them. Go ahead and sack that one. And we can play the Besaidu still if they decide to fire up their Den of the Bugbear, which is pretty useful. Gonna use a Perforos, which is a thing. Is it other creatures? It's other creatures, okay. It's indestructible, so I can't Besaidu it away I would any other thing. So we'll go ahead and play the Unclaimed Territory, maybe Merfolk. Go ahead and play the Regery. Now, I attack with three, but it does force them to give up their Town Razors, and my Sea and Sky will live. We'll also turn off... If we draw a Hexcatcher here, actually. Nah, I, I wanted to draw land. I didn't want to draw merfolks. So that's cool. <laughs> so yeah, they have to block. That gets rid of both their town raisers. Their perforos will not have the devotion to be a creature, so we don't have to worry about that. Exactly. Does suck to lose our sea and sky there, but we're in an okay spot. I can still besage you if they decide to fire up the den of the bugbear. See what I do. Let's see. They probably won't. Because they have to keep back a blocker. Alright, we'll take the win. I mean, <laughs> kinda. I think they still had a few turns in that, but I understand why they did that. So that was our Merfolk Tribal little video. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of polite or somewhat constructive <laughs> comments, that's what comments are for down below. Remember to stay safe out there and be kind to one another. Bye bye